Hi, it's Mining44 here and today I invite you to the review of the Runcam Scopecam Light Camera. If you plan to record your own airsoft gameplays, either for your own or to post them on YouTube, you will need cameras. The first one you will need is the one that you will have mounted on your head. It will give you the classic view like from FPP games. But it's not enough. Because if the opponent is far away from you, often you will not even see who you are shooting, let alone the hits themselves. You will need a closed camera on the replica to see your target accurately. <clears throat> a long time ago people installed camcorders on their replicas to achieve this. Later, with the advent of the FPV cameras, someone realized that it's possible to replace the lens to a zoom-in lens and add an appropriate mount to install it on the replica. And so we got the scope cams we know today. But what if we would like to have a ready-to-go solution? After all, not every now one knows how to modify cameras. Fortunately, the manufacturers sensed the opportunity in this situation and began to release out-of-the-box solutions and one of those ready-to-play cameras is the Runcam Scopecam Lite. A, a camera that after taking out of the box, placing in the battery, charging it and installing the memory card, we can install on the replica and enjoy great shots from your airsoft adventures. But is it really that great? Let's see how it's built and what features it has. But let's start with a small unboxing. The camera comes to us in a small white box with the Runcam logo and a sticker with the camera model. Inside we will find Operating manual in two languages, English and Chinese. The camera. Battery. And the power cord. Let's take a look at the camera itself. The camera measures approximately 113mm in length, 45mm in width and 35mm in height. Weights approximately 95 grams with the battery and memory card in. The camera is made of shiny plastic similar to the SIMA 515. The front of the camera has a glass protecting the lens and it does it well. My camera got hit by a BB in this place and the glass is fine. On the bottom we will find an integrated wrist rail mount, but we'll come back to it later. To install the 850mAh battery that lasts for almost 2 hours of recording, we have to open the door on the back of the camera. Here we will also find a microSD memory card slot with a maximum capacity of 128GB. The camera has only two buttons, the larger illuminated one is responsible for starting and switching off the camera and recording. The smaller one is responsible only for operation of the Wi-Fi function, above it there is a blue LED that signals the operation of the camera in this mode. In addition, the camera has a few more LEDs. The three white ones at the top inform us about the battery charge status. Three LEDs means over 66% of charge. Two means the range between 66 and 33%. One is below 33% and when it starts flashing, the battery has less than 10% charge. On the back we find two LEDs. The one on the right informs us whether the camera is charging. When it goes out, the camera is charged. The one on the left lights up when the camera is recording and the LED under the main button flashes during recording too. On the back there is also micro USB port and microphone. The camera itself has a 40mm lens which gives us a fairly high magnification, ideal for use with long-range replicas. Additionally, the entire lens can be turned 90 degrees to the right, a very useful option when we want to mount the camera on the side of the replica instead of the top. At this point I have to mention that the factory focus was not the best and I have to improve it a bit. But let's get back to the integrated race rail mount. Mounting cameras on airsoft replicas is not the easiest task, so I was glad that the camera had a such mount already built in. But my joy quickly passed when I realized how it was made. Just like the whole camera, the mount is made of plastic, in addition it's very small. The tooth that attaches to the wrist rail is only 17mm long, so despite tightening the camera it moves mercilessly, which makes us not sure where exactly it looks. And even if we set it perfectly, a slight bump on something will change it. So your recordings may not be useful at all, which I have experienced few times using this camera. You will probably say that I didn't tighten it enough. There is another problem, if we tighten it too much the assembly will simply break and the camera will not be usable for anything. 
The problem is so big that the Rankam itself gives us the opportunity to buy a metal mount for about 8 euros. I do not know if it eliminates the camera moving so much, but I sincerely doubt it. Let's say, however, that we managed to mount the camera stable on the replica, how to use it then? The launch itself is super easy, just hold the shutter button until the camera starts up. Then, if the appropriate function is on, it will automatically start recording. To stop recording, just press the button once, and to turn it off completely, just hold it down until it turns off. Ok, but how to change for example settings or preview recordings? To do this, we will need a smartphone and a Runcam app. When the camera is running but not recording, we can turn on the Wi-Fi by pressing the upper button once. When the blood LED is flashing, it means that we can connect to the camera. We have to turn on the app now and in it connect to the camera. Wi-Fi settings will appear and we have to find the RCS Lite network. Connect to it, enter the standard password 12345678890. When the LED lights up continuously, it means that we are connected to the camera and now we can return to the app. At this point we will see the image from the camera and its image options and we have at our disposal white balance settings, exposure, contrast, sharpness, sensitivity, saturation, shutter speed, measurement mode, and the ability to rotate the image. On the main screen we will find the option to change the recording's resolution and we have such modes as 720p 120fps, 1080p 30fps, 50fps and 60fps, and 1440p 30fps. We will also find out how much we can still record on the memory card. A little higher there is a button to turn on the crosshair, which should help us set up the camera. It's not visible in the recordings though. We can switch the image to full screen and of course view the recordings and download them to the phone. In advanced options we'll find automatic time synchronization, date display on recordings, automatic shutdown when the camera is idle, camera sound switch, video quality, camera audio that is very quiet, automatic recording on startup, we can set the length of the clips between 1 and 5 minutes, it also means that it's going to override them when the card is full. Further there are TV output functions, Wi-Fi options, memory card format, application language, reserved to factory settings and software version. We know what the camera looks like and what functions it has, so let's see how the image from it looks like. In this test I wanted to check when the image will be in focus. I stood at distance from 10 to 60 meters in 10 meters increments. And nothing bad is happening to your device, visible artifacts and image steering is caused by the fact that the video was recorded when the camera was connected to the phone as preview. But as you can see the image it says is quite sharp, from 30 meters and further. Unfortunately due to the fact that the protective glass is quite far from the lens, haze on the image is often visible on the recordings when shooting against light. So let's see some gameplay recordings and as I said before due to its mount many shots are useless. The camera moves and I had to enlarge the material a bit to center it so it looked ok. In addition, the sound recorded by the camera is very quiet. It's enough to synchronize the recording, but it's not suitable for anything else. Here is the sound from Rankam. And now GoPro. As for comparison, my 7 year old SJ4000. Speaking of the synchronization of the recordings, I must mention the biggest problems, the gaps between clips. Most of the cameras I have either save the recordings without interruptions, or even duplicate the last second of the recording in the next clip to ensure their continuity. So we can be sure that we have everything recorded. In this camera, unfortunately, it does not work like that. Depending on how good your memory card is, you can expect gap between recordings of like 6 to 12 frames, as it in my case. Or even 3 seconds if you have a slow memory card. It's absolutely unacceptable. 
Firstly, if you manually sync the recordings, it causes a number of problems, and secondly, we lose some footage, which in the worst case may mean that you won't record a hit. I will just add that the problem is known to Runcom for several months, and despite the promises, we have not received a software update to fix it so far. Summarizing, Runcom's Copcom Lite is a product that in my eyes had a great chance of success. The camera has a removable battery that will last for almost 2 hours, a rotating lens so we can mount it on the side of the replica, which is additionally protected by a durable lens, and the camera itself has an integrated wrist rail mount. In addition, the camera is easy to use thanks to the application for the phone, and it has a lot of functions to set the image, and the most popular resolution 1080p 60fps, which is an out for most users. Here, unfortunately, that pros end, because the integrated wrist mount is so loose that the camera looks in a different direction each time, which may make the recordings useless, and if you try to tighten it too much, it may simply break. The image itself is often hazy to the protective glass, the sound recorded is very silent, and there are breaks between clips in the worst cases up to 3 seconds, which not only can make the synchronization of recordings difficult, but we can also just lose some action. The camera costs about 82 euros at the time of the review on the Runcom website, but to be honest, I cannot recommend it. Personally, I'm very disappointed with the camera, and after a few months of trying to make it work, I gave up and returned to my proven Foxeer Legend 2 Plus, in which I mounted a 35mm lens and to which I made a special mount. And it may not look great, but it works much better and I can fully rely on it. I waited so long with the review of the Runcam because it was I was still under the delusion that there will be an update that will fix the gap between recordings. But so far it has not happened. But if it comes out, I will do an update to the review. Honestly, I also don't understand why Runcam decided to make such an important element as the mount so tiny and delicate. At the bottom of the camera we still have a lot of space and the mount could be about 50 mm long and the camera would definitely sit better. And instead it's only 70 mm, which is why this, such a long camera simply moves mercilessly from side to side. In a budget option, a better solution would be to buy the Legend 2 Plus camera, but unfortunately it has been withdrawn from the market. Other budget options uh, is the Hawkeye Firefly Q6 camera. Of course, there are other cameras available, but these are sometimes more expensive. It will be all for today. If you use Runcam's Copcam Lite, write in the comments how is it going for you. And for now, thanks for watching and see you next time.